Hello and welcome to a new video. So today Old School RuneScape turned 6 years old and Jagex did a celebratory stream on Twitch in which they had a data stream segment where they showed quite a bit of interesting data about Old School RuneScape. So let's have a look at the really interesting parts of that data. First starting with the really interesting Dwell Arena tags. So the Dwell Arena tax was released in mid of August last year and this data right here is from about 10 days ago. So in total in those 6 months between August and February there were 4 trillion GP claimed by the Dwell Arena tax system. So that means that 400 trillion GP had been staked since then. Also, the most taxed individual was taxed for 26.8 billion GP. So that means in total he staked 2.6 trillion GP. But he probably went up and down and up and down and up and down and we have no idea where he landed. So we don't know we, how rich this person is. So to put those 4 trillion of tax GP in 6 months into a relationship, here is some data from late 2017 which is the best data that I could find. It's from the last data stream they did. So back then there was around 20 trillion GP in the game in total in platinum tokens and coins combined. Sadly they didn't show how many GPs there are in the game but they showed this Grand Exchange transactions graph which shows the value of all the trades on the Grand Exchange on each day and we can draw some conclusions from that. So at the beginning of February in 2018 there was the average trade per day was around 2.5 trillion and now it's at around 5.5 trillion. So we can just basically if we assume that the amount of trades is linear with the amount of GP in game Divide our 20 trillion at the end of 2017 by two and a half and multiply it by 5.5. So this comes to around 44 trillion gold. So that means in 2018 there was more gold created than in the five years before it. Which is quite insane. But the player count has risen by quite a bit. Warcraft came out. A lot of people farmed a lot of bosses that drop a lot of alkables. And alkables are coming from everywhere. So if this assumption about the amount of GP in the game right now from me is correct. We can say that the Dwell Arena tax slows down the GP coming into the game by about one third. So for each three GP that come to the game one of them is getting lost in the taxation system of the Dwell Arena. They also showed this graph right here which shows the daily amount of taxed money which clearly shows that it's about constant between 20 and 25 billion and it's not all the money was staked in the beginning and the amounts of money at the Dwell Arena seem to go down. They seem to stay steady but actually it should go up because of more GP coming into the game. But I think the taxation system cuts down the amount at the arena quite a bit and now it seems to be able to stay steady but not go up like in the past. So the Dwell Arena tax might have less of an influ influence in the future when the amount of money in the game rises even more due to newer updates. But the amount of GP at the arena doesn't rise as fast anymore. So that's the whole Dwell Arena tax stuff done. So now some other cool data. So they showed the average daily playtime of old school RuneScape players. So the average normal player on the normal account has like 4 hours of playtime. All the peaks you can see are weekends. So during the week people play about 30 minutes less on average than on the weekends. Like I thought that difference was bigger but it seems quite small. Like the big drop you can see right there, that's where mobile came out. A lot of casual players came to the game which didn't play a lot. So the average went down but now the casuals started leaving or turned into hardcore players so it went up again. So also in July you can see a drop right there where it went under 200 minutes on average. That was when that big uh, fuck up happened with the max cash glitch. So the servers were off for like 6 hours. If you can't play, you can't get playtime. 
So you can also see that normal Iron Man play more than normal accounts, hardcore Iron Man play about as much as normal accounts and ultimate Iron Man play less than normal accounts on average. And what I want to say to this topic is, I'm about the average. I don't even play more than the average RuneScape player. I always thought the average was somewhere around 2 or 3 hours and not about 4 to 5 like it looks like on this data. So they also showed the XP gained this year from everybody combined. So the combined experience of everyone this year looks like it's around 20 trillion experience. And of that 20 trillion, 2.38 trillion is in hit points only. But that 20 trillion number is just a big and cool number. So let's compare it to the last year. So from the data stream one year earlier, we can see that it was 12.5 trillion experience in that year about. So we can say in 2018, it was about 50% more experience gained than in 2017. Really nice. So that means more people are actually playing and more people are also training skills. And it's not only PBM, even though the experience show that most of the experience is still in the combat stats. Also, people didn't like runecrafting in 2017 and they didn't like it either in 2018. They also showed how long it takes the average player to reach certain milestones. For example, to get to max total level of 2277, it takes the average player 249 days of 24 hours. So 249 days of playtime means 249 times 24 hours. I checked on my account with the most play time on old school. It has 303 days and it's still quite a bit away from maxed. They also had a segment about pets. First, the most common pets are the fishing pet, the wood cutting pet, the croken pet, the mining pet and the thieving pet. The pets you can go show off with and the rarest are the Inferno pet, the Barbarian Assault pet, the Bloodhound, Wetion and Lil Sick. There are only 194 Inferno pets, which is super low. They are extremely rare. Here is the total amount of each pet in the game. So there's always the name of the pet, the total amount in game and the change this year. So if you want to have a deeper look into this table or you want to check something out, pause the video here and have a look at it. I won't go deeper into it because everybody is interested in something different. By the way, all the slides from this data stream should be in the description as well. I will upload them to Imgur so you can have a look through everything. Also the stuff I won't cover because I don't think it's interesting enough to cover. By the way, you can use those pet rates to quite okay approximate how much of which PVM item there is in the game. Because they didn't share that data this year, but for example, you can go for the noon pet and then multiply that by the drop rate and most of the people stop killing a boss like uh, grotesque guardians once they get the pet. So you actually know how many people about killed the boss. There's a little error, of course. But then from that amount of people that killed the boss, you can figure out how many of the drops of that boss are out there in the game. They also shared this list of top boss kill counts of all time, which is quite interesting, in my opinion. Basically, there's some insane kill counts on some people's accounts. Like one guy has killed 102,000 Sulras. You kill maybe like 30 an hour. So that's a huge amount of time invested. So there's also this guy that killed 76k Warcalf. So since the day Warcalf came out, if he kills 30 an hour, he killed it for 6 to 7 hours every single day which is insane. Also one guy did 200 Infernos and basically nobody does Gullback again after Dragon Slayer 2 because it has no drops. But one guy did it 15 times. I think he just was paranoid about doing it on his hardcore Iron Man. So he probably did it loads of times to get really secure with the boss fight before doing it. 
At least that's my assumption. They also released this data about the food eaten. The most common food that's eaten is shark. But what I found interesting for myself was that there were 517 million manta rays eaten, by the way of which most come from PVM drops and not from fishing trawler, which I'm salty about because they wanted to remove food from drops, they removed sharks, they added manta rays. Kinda weird in my opinion. But I had 2.1 million manta rays at one point in 2018. So that means I had enough manta rays for everyone to eat for one and a half days. At the end of the data stream they shared this amazing map of where hardcore Iron Man's die. First data here. 36% of all created Hardcore Iron Man died. I actually thought it would be higher, but actually over 60% of Hardcore Iron Man's didn't die. But probably a lot of people just quit and stopped playing. So you can see, wherever there's a hotspot, the red stuff is bigger. So you can see a clear hotspot at Winter Tot. You can clear see a clear hotspot at RD, where you pickpocket the cakes. And you can also see a lot of people die right when they come out of Tutorial Island or around there because everything of the free to play map looks like somebody died somewhere. So quite interestingly it seems like nobody, like no hardcore Iron Man died on Mosley Harmless. Like on the surface of the island. I don't know how dungeons work on this map. They didn't explain if dungeons are included, but I assume not. Because otherwise on Mosley Harmless quite a bit of people would have died, I assume. Because you get the black mask there and some dude forgets to eat or something and would die getting a black mask. But yeah, cool map to finish off this video. Please give it a like if you enjoyed it. I just wanted to summarize. Again, all the slides should be in the description as an Imgur link where you can have a look at all the slides of the data stream if you actually want to. Thanks for watching, thanks and bye.